In this video, I'm going to show you how to import from Excel or any other workbook that you might be working from into Microsoft Project. I'm using the very latest version of Microsoft Project as of December 2021, but it works the same in pretty much every single version. Okay, so let's take a look at this. So, you know, what I have here is an Excel workbook and, you know, the number one competitor to Microsoft Project is Excel. So I'm going to stick with Excel. We can see here we've got our task names, start dates, finish dates. You know, this is a pretty comprehensive workbook. You can see they've calculated duration based on the start and finish dates here. We've got milestones being flagged. We've got who's working on it, etc. So, you know, it's, it's somewhat smart, but if I increase the duration, it's not going to increase the finish dates. This schedule is somewhat, somewhat connected, but, you know, it's not very relative if i increase if i push out a finish date here does it push out the end date of the schedule no it won't so what we're going to do is import this schedule into microsoft project now there are definitely some gotchas and i'm going to walk through those with you as we go ahead and do this it's a fairly simple process though so here we have microsoft project so a couple of things before we get started but number one rule do not enter start or finish dates into Microsoft project. That's the differentiator between Microsoft project and every other application is that Microsoft project manages the dates for you. Whereas in Excel, those dates are manual. Okay. We're going to put in the names of the, the tasks. We're going to put in the predecessors and then Microsoft project will calculate the start and finish dates for us. That's one of the values of the scheduling engine. So let's go get ahead and get started. So the first thing you want to do is look at the task names. You want to line up the information that you're going to be inserting. So I'm just going to capture, is it a milestone? Duration is good to know and resources is good to know and task name is good to know. I'm actually not going to touch these start and finish dates. Trust me, you'll see why. So first thing I'm going to do is copy the dig foundation. Copy that. And with the task names, paste that in. Didn't quite get it. Right click, copy, paste those in. You see, boom, 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 boom. Now I have auto scheduled switched on. This means that the scheduling engine is switched on. By default, out of the box, Microsoft Project comes with manually scheduled. What I'm going to do is Control Z and we're going to manually schedule this time and see the difference. No durations, no starts, no finish. So this is pretty similar to, 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 to leveraging Excel, right? You're in control of the duration. You're in control of the start dates. You're in control of finish dates. It's not going to manage those for you. I don't like that. It's a, a method of, 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 of working within Microsoft Project to kind of win people over from Excel. So if you want to have that control, you can. And still build out all the nice reports. Gantt charts and other components as well, as well as obviously the integration with Project Online. So I'm going to try that again. Control Z. I'm going to come back and I'm going to copy this again. But this time I'm going to switch new task to auto schedule. Highly recommend you do that. Okay. Paste those in. Great. Duration. One day. Start finish dates. What I want next is I'm not going to take the start and finish dates, remember. I'm going to put in the durations of those tasks. Now you'll notice that some of these are milestones. Structure ready is a milestone. It has a zero day duration. House complete is a milestone, zero day duration. If I come in here and paste those durations down, boom, you can see it's now calculating the start and finish dates for us based on the durations, but they're all starting at the same time It's because we're not putting in a start date. It's actually taking the project start date, which by default is going to be today's date, 12, 21, 21. So I'm actually going to come in and change that and say our project is actually going to get started January 1st, January 3rd. There we go. You can see I had it as January 1st here, but you know, there's no way we're going to start on a Saturday. So it makes sense to start the project on a Monday. <clears throat> so that's again, <laughs> you can see that it's Monday in here. 
in Excel, we just had the dates. So straight away, I'm, I'm getting clarity. All right, so next thing I want to do is look at the predecessors. Now we can do this in a number of ways. We can just type in the number. So obviously, we're going to look at line one, lay rebar happens after dig foundation. Pour concrete happens after we've laid the rebar and right, the walls happens after that. So you can come in and do this, or you can just come in at the top, scroll all the way down. And if they are all to be linked in series like so, you can see we can do that. You see that the Gantt chart's kind of pushed out now. Quick tip here, click view entire project and we can see how it's looking on the Gantt chart. Great. Uh, last one is the resource names. Tom, Scarlett, Addison. So I'm actually going to come and copy all of these and paste them in here. Now what we're going to notice is a few things. It's not going to be a perfect scenario. So we've got Tom Scarlett, Lawrence Tom, Lawrence, Addison Scarlett, Tom. Great. It looks pretty good, but let's go to the resource sheet. View resource sheet. This is where we can see our resource pool. Nice. It's actually worked out pretty well. It's imported each individual person, even though we had commas between them. That is where it's at. You must have commas. Microsoft recognizes those. Once you've done that, you actually want to come in, give them a standard rate, maybe $60 an hour. Now Microsoft's project is going to be able to start calculating how much our project is going to cost based on the duration and how much work these people are working on those projects. Boom. So very quickly, we now have a project schedule built out to a pretty nice degree. Oh, you can see we actually got an extra task in here. Let's go ahead and delete that. But at this point, our schedule is fully functional. We have our Gantt chart, we have our resources assigned, we have our predecessors. That it's now, if I come in here and increase the duration of the lay rebar, my project is dynamically updated. You can see the blue change highlighting here, which represents that these dates have all just been affected by the change made. Pretty cool stuff. Thanks for watching, and I hope you find value in this video. Remember, do not do start and finish dates. You're going to have to spend a bit of time working on the predecessors, adjusting durations as necessary. What I suggest you do if you want to calculate that duration is use a simple formula, as you can see on my screen here, to capture the delta between the start and the finish dates. So you can see there is the formula on the screen. Insert those durations as opposed to the start and finish dates. Put in your predecessors and you'll be in a good spot. Thank you so much for watching and please like and subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate your feedback and likes and yeah, many more to come. Have a good day.